Hey folks, good afternoon here, hard at work as always, getting ready for a number of things, including my time tomorrow for Mike Pintech on News Radio 1020, KDK between noon and three. Some of the headlines trending today, the House passes a $4 trillion budget, the vote 216 to 212, gives the green light for work to begin on a $1.5 trillion tax cut and move it through Congress without fears of blocking tactics from Democrats. Also, the White House is yet to say whether they would release the classified files on the JFK assassination or elect to keep some of the files secret. Could this happen in today's modern times, especially with social media? We'll talk to a man who has made it his business as far as media and communications. He is a professor from Robert Morris University, Anthony Moretti, tomorrow right after local news at two o'clock during the Mike Pintech show on the Disc Institute of Pittsburgh Newsline. President Trump said the opioid crisis in the nation is a issue, but he will look at it as a public health emergency. It will not go under the National Emergency Act or the Stanford Act, but the president's designation for this emergency will be focused on by Health and Human Services. Also from KDK.com, Dr. Anthony Hamlet, superintendent of Pittsburgh Public Schools, visited Pittsburgh King Pre-K through 8th and said changes will happen. The visit came after two teachers were involved in run-ins with students in the past 10 days. Now, some lighthearted stuff as a Halloween holiday is fast approaching. Also from KDK.com, expect to see plenty of bags of M&Ms in your kid's trick-or-treat bag this year. According to CandyStore.com, they looked at data from bulk candy sales across the country and information from candy manufacturers and distributors to determine the most popular Halloween candies in each state. The results found that M&M edged out Skittles as Pennsylvania's most popular Halloween candy. Hershey's mini bars trailed behind Skittles in third place. 38 men involved in what a lot of people are saying was one of the greatest games played in the 113 year history of the World Series. Dodger Stadium, 54,293 witnessed four hours and 19 minutes of pure drama. And in the end, Houston even up the series at a game of peace following their 7-6 victory. The game saw a record eight home runs. And as they say, it was fantastic. Yeah, great drama at Dodger Stadium last night. Dave Kaplan of NBC Sports Chicago today first to report Joe Girardi would not be returning as manager of the Yankees even though he had the team just one game away from reaching the World Series. Girardi through his agent confirmed that story later in the day. 910 wins and 710 losses in 10 years. He took the Yankees to the playoffs six times. General Manager Brian Cashman in his statement said a number of good things about their former skipper, including how he and Hal Steinbrenner told Joe he was a great Yankee on and off the field. Now the Yankees, along with the Nationals and Phillies, will continue to search for new managers. Thursday night football, Miami versus Baltimore. Speaking of that, my buddy Jim Merrick, of course, you know him from Heffron till it's in your money and you, sent me something from marketwatch.com that I found very interesting. Quarterbacks, wide receivers, and running backs get the NFL glory when the league's highlights are shown but many defensive players get their due where it counts in their paychecks. A look at the highest paid NFL player at each position so his defensive players make $30 million more than the offensive ones. The 11 highest paid defenders make a combined $179.8 million, led by the Kansas City Chiefs, their linebacker Justin Houston, $22.1 million, while the offensive guys combined to earn $149.4 million this season. The highest paid offensive player is Joe Flacco, a quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, who makes $24.5 million a season. Now, the chart comes from HowMuch.net, a cost information website which is used by SportsTrack.com salary figures. The highest paid running backs, Pittsburgh Steelers' Le'Veon Bell, $12.1 million, less than half of what Flacco makes. Now, despite these sky-high salaries, the average salary in the league is just a little over $2 million, and the average NFL player's career lasts only three and a third seasons. That's it. In addition, with some of the league's larger contracts, the money isn't always guaranteed, unlike contracts in the NBA and Major League Baseball. NFL contracts are often complicated and sometimes include a signing bonus, something that the player and his agent demand, knowing the latter years of a deal, well, might not get paid. For example, when Flacco signed his six-year $120.6 million contract in 2013, only $52 million of it was guaranteed. So interesting stuff from Jim Meredith. Always interesting his morning commentary. Jamie Meredith with Ask the Advisor. And of course, the show is all about your phone calls, getting strong financial advice from one of the country's best financial institutions, Heffron Tillotson 
helping you build a stronger financial portfolio. He is in the air chair this week between 9 and noon, Sunday morning, part of your weekend lineup on News Radio 1020 KDK. And yes, in the lineup, as always, tonight for the Penguins, at home, Evgeny Malcolm, who's 11 points, and Sidney Crosby, five goals on the season. Two of the game's best will lead their Penguins tonight at home against Winnipeg, 4-3-0. and The Pens are 6-3-1. and They'll drop the puck at 7. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your day. And don't forget tomorrow, noon to 3, for Mike Pintech on News Radio 1020 KDK. Good afternoon.